And to find out where you went wrong, read it over again. You've got time. At last, the Cyprus news is bright. At last, the chief obstacle to a settlement does seem to have been overcome. Greece and Turkey, at any rate, have reached agreement, promising news indeed, and it comes after some four years of intermittent rioting and terrorism. Field Marshal Sir John Harding, as he then was, appointed Governor and Commander-in-Chief, did his utmost to persuade Archbishop Makarios to use his influence for peace. A sincere and reasonable approach, but abortive. Also, of course, the leader of the large Turkish minority was consulted. No solution, however, could be found, and the situation deteriorated once more. These scenes are typical of this phase. The pictures so vividly underlining the situation were taken by movie tone cameramen David Samuelson, John Davis and Len Waldorf. The Archbishop reported to be implicated in the terrorist's activity was sent into exile. Curfews were frequently imposed in Cyprus, the importance of which as a base is emphasized by Lord Harding. I believe that the most important factor to be borne in mind when you are considering the future of Cyprus is the fact that it does occupy a very important strategic position, not only in regard to British military effort in the Middle East, but in relation to its position on the right flank of NATO, close to the Turkish shores, and in regard to the region as a whole. In the struggle against the terrorists, the men of Ioka had to be tracked down in mountainous, wooded country. Prisoners, both wanted men and suspects, were taken, but not their leader, Grivas. Later, Sir Hugh Foote succeeded to the governorship and was duly sworn in. He faced an ugly situation and decided to try a new approach. It was one of friendly conciliation, and ignoring personal risk, he went out among the villages to talk to the people himself. At first, there was a hope that this might prove effective. Then again, murder and arson broke out, and the brief lull was over. A new attempt to solve the problem was made last summer, when Mr. Macmillan himself went to Athens and presently to Ankara. It was another effort to reconcile Greek and Turkish views. The Prime Minister also visited Cyprus to confer with Sir Hugh. A new plan was offered. He called it Adventure in Partnership, but the plan was rejected. Clashes between Turks and Greeks were inevitable, leading to more riots, more loss of life. In every situation, the security forces were involved. Their duty, to keep order. Here's a demonstration by Cypriot girls, tactfully, indeed quite gently, handled by British troops. Now, at last, after some four tragic years, the Greek and Turkish premiers have reached agreement at their meeting in Zurich. They and their foreign ministers have produced a plan for the future of Cyprus. Details naturally remain to be agreed, but when the foreign ministers flew to London to present the plan to the British government, the prospect seemed really promising. All-round agreement, should it be reached, could bring peace and prosperity to Cyprus, an ideal place for tourists. An island of happy and contented people, as indeed they are by nature and tradition. An island where the families of British servicemen could go shopping in safety. An island of sunny beaches, where men on leave from the base, which would be retained, could relax by the seaside. All this may yet come true.